So I'm going to give an introduction to the observer and also relate it with, uh, to worry or with thinking in the head and also uh, pain in the heart. So first of all the thing with the observer is to recognize that uh, say for example with a mug or an object if you see a, a meaningless mug or an object it's very clear to see that when you observe it, you're not the mug. So the observer is not the object which is being observed. So if I put a mug in front of you, now the thing with the mug is the observer can clearly see the dimensions, the limits of it. It's clearly an object, and even if the object moves, or but it's got a sort of a shape or uh, something. And the observer, it's very, very clear there's detached observing. There's no like confusion that one is the mug. The mug is an object which passes before the observer. And the observer can also see the limits of the thing. And the observer knows when the mug is in front of it and when the mug is not in front of it. So that's, that's something. But what about, uh, what about worry and mentalization? Anything which can come and go, like worry uh, or, th or obsessive mentalization or even pains in the heart you know that are very intense those things are observed how does one know they're observed well because it's observed when they're here and when they're gone so the observer that knows when mentalization and worry is here and when it's gone the observer of worry cannot be worry because it knows when worry is here and when worry is not so worry is like a, it's like a shape, or it's like a cloud, or even mentalization has got its own pattern, and the observer that knows when it's here and when it's not here. So maybe in the morning or a few days ago there was no worry, and now there is. So something is observing when worry is here. Worry is like a cloud. You know, it may have a shape or, or a texture or a sensation about it. So one knows, the observer knows when worry is here when it's not here. So that observer is still here. There is a detached observer that's watching worry, which is not worry, and it's here right now. And when worry is gone, that observer is still here. So the worry is an object. So be that which is watching the worry, but is not the worry. That is here right now, because it knows that worry is here. Just like when a cloud is in the room, you can get confused and say, I am the cloud. It's not true. You're not the cloud. Even if the cloud is right in front of your face, you're the observer observing the cloud when it comes and goes. Because even when it's gone, the observer will still be here. And when it's here, it's still here. So it's an object which is observed. Be the detached object. Be in that place which is watching the worry and detach. Also pain. If there's a pain anywhere in the body, sometimes it can be sharp, intense pains. But a pain is also, if there's pain in the heart, that's an object. You see, you just let it be there. But actually, if one suddenly gets a pain in the heart, you know, maybe yesterday or earlier this morning, there wasn't a pain in the heart. So even an acute pain is observed. The observer of the pain, see, is the observer of the pain in pain? That which watches pain, that the watcher of an object is the watcher of an object affected by the object. So go to that detached observer of pain. Is that which watches pain come and go? Is the observer or the witnesser of pain in pain? And even if that witnesser or observing of pain, which knows pain is here like an object, if that observer is in pain, then that's what I call an interested or an enmeshed or an attached observer. So then, but then that observer which is hooking into the pain, there is an observer of that observer. So there is an observer which is not hooking into pain. There is a detached observing of pain. So if there's an observing which is attached to pain, be the observer of the interested observer. So is the observer that's observing the observer that's interested in pain, is that observer in pain? Eventually you'll find that there is an observing, whether it be pain or whether it be worry or whether it be thoughts, which is not hooking in. So the observer of thoughts is not a thought. The observer of worry is not worry. The observer of pain is not pain. I mean, that's the detached observer. 
it's, it's seen that when one is in the observer, one is not the thing, the object. It's clear that the object is not the observer, mm. they're the detached observer. So just keep, an, what, and when you're in the observer position, if that observer is feeling restricted, limited or constricted in any way, then what is observing that constriction or that limitation? So you start to get more expansive. Uh, and even if that's uh, got any limits in it, what's observing that, you see? So this is the process of just, if you feel like you're an object or constricted, or if you're anything that can come and go, then there is something that's, that is the watcher of anything that can come and go. So what is here, as you're starting to clear this and get experience of an observing, which is not the object, are you now an observer which is something that is not an object? Are you an observer which is not worry? Are you an observer which is not a thought or mentalization? Are you an observer which is not pain? Is the observer you are something that can come and go? But what's observing this thing that can come and go? Is the ultimate observer, as you keep doing the practice, is the observer anything that can come and go? And if it is, then what's observing the thing that can come and go? So is the ultimate observer something that can be an object, or can it not be an object? So you're just inquiring within, going deeper within. So we'll, um, we'll allow one, we'll sit in silence for about two or three minutes, and then we'll see where we are with this practice.